I, I mean, that's kind of been my mo for most of Metallica's um, career. There were it, there was a year or two because you know things things started so quickly, and and we were just literally like half an hour after we started, we were. You know, we were in San Francisco, and then, you know, Johnny Z called, and then we were on the East Coast, and then we were making a record. I mean, it just moved. Quickly, right. So quickly. And, you know, when we came back from Ride the Lightning, it was like, wow. And we had a little bit of time. At, at that time, you know, like a month or two was like an eternity. Mm -hmm. It's like, what am I going to do now for a whole month? <laughs> you know? And so both uh, Kirk went back to taking guitar lessons from Cetriani, and I went back, and I thought I could... You know, I'd never really taken lessons, and I never started playing because you wanted to. Yeah, be I a just band. wanted to. I just wanted to be in Diamond Head and <laughs> Motorhead, and I didn't. It was like, oh, you have to learn to play the instruments. I mean, I, it was almost like karaoke in the beginning. It was just like I just wanted to be in a karaoke heavy metal band, you know, sit and bash along to. That's what Hetfield and I did. We just sat and played along to. You put the Diamond music on Head. and play along. Yeah, yeah. Sit, and then all of a sudden it was like, wow, this is getting real. It sort of wasn't really intended that way right. for the. And so, you know, I, I'd never really taken lessons, so I, I took some lessons from uh, one of Satriani's guys, super cool guy, and until and Kurt, you know, took sure, um, yeah. lessons, and, and we were sort of, you know, playing a little bit of catch-up. And so I went through a period that probably culminated in the Justice album where I felt sort of compelled to try to show ability. Mm. It's like, you know, and listen, when you got... Dave Lombardo and Charlie Benante, you know, breathing down your back. <laughs> I mean, it was like, okay, I gotta. You had some try to. I, I tried yeah. to step up, step it up a little bit, and try to do my own thing and do all this crazy shit. The part on but, one, that double kick on one, is is very intricate. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. I mean, and, and a lot of those things were actually written on the, because we start, you know, I would come up with drum riffs and drum ideas that Hitfield would write. Riffs to you know, riffs to gotcha, right. like justice for all, doom, but doom, boom, you know, okay. all that stuff. But I was very, I was trying really hard to push the drums kind of into the foreground. Mm -hmm. And then after like a year or two of that, I was like, okay, seriously, it's like, you know, just do your thing, chill out, support the riffs, do what's best for the song. So since around. I guess the late 80s, so I guess it's been like 25 years mm -hmm. now. The only thing that's really interested me is just doing the best thing for the song and sitting and doing, um, you know, the kind of the Phil Rudd, four on the yeah, floor, the when, when it calls for that. That's really what I love to do. And, and just to be able to make James's riff swing and to make it kind of bounce and, and to do all that type of stuff, I just sort of turned a corner where I just stopped being interested in, they're gonna try to do, you know, mm -hmm. thirty-two to thirty. I don't even know what paradiddles. <laughs> paradiddles standing upside down, you know, backwards, fucking <laughs> Lombardo style. It's like let Lombardo be Lombardo. Sure. And I'll kind of just do my own thing, and and you know, so. But everybody goes through periods, you know, of of that kind of thing, and and I got mine out of my system pretty early, and and like I said, for the last twenty-five. 30 years or whatever, it's mm -hmm. just been more about making it swing, and that's what I'm happy to do.